not everyone was content with the reforms. Supporters of the Caliphate felt that Kamal and the country were on the wrong path. Others, close to him, felt resentment, believing that they did not get the promotions they deserved. Building up their resentment, certain opponents planned to assassinate Mustafa Kemal when he was to visit Izmir in 1926. Thanks to an informer, the would-be assassins were arrested before they could act. Mustafa Kemal entered Izmir unharmed, but in a rage. Izmir assassination attempt was such a threat to his own sense of immortality that he had the man brought to him and identified himself to the man and said, I'm Mustafa Kemal, you want to kill me? Gave him his gun and said, go ahead. Uh, and of course the man didn't dare to do that. But Kemal had to confront this uh, attempt at his life in order to resettle his own sense of his immortality because it was such an attack uh, on that. After the trials, 13 people who had been linked to the plot were publicly hanged. All opposition to the reforms and the Republic had been silenced. With the conspirators out of the way, Kamal turned his eyes from the emancipation of women to the emancipation of the mind. He knew that in a country with a literacy rate of only 8%, to establish democracy, illiteracy had to be defeated. It had to be done with a new pragmatic alphabet, which was easy to learn and would enable the entrance of knowledge into the country. Despite the experts' complaints that five years would be needed to adopt the Latin alphabet, he ordered, it will be done in three months or not done at all. His anxiety to promote education was very personal. I guess he valued the education he had had, which elevated him from a class of ignorant people to a class of understanding and governing people. Using his charisma and persuasion, Mustafa Kemal convinced the Turkish people that learning and the teaching of a new alphabet was a national task. He toured every corner of the country with a blackboard and taught the new alphabet. The Turkish educational reform had begun with Mustafa Kemal as the head teacher. His enthusiasm was such that some of his favorite people were the, were the teachers of the country. One of his favorite visiting programs was to schools. He even went so far as to, on his own, discover students he thought showed promise, personally select them for advanced study at home or even abroad. Education was not confined to the classroom. Establishing what were termed as folk houses, Mustafa Kemal aimed to spread the reforms to the less privileged in every corner of the country. These institutions provided services ranging from dramatics to literature and history. Thanks to the folk houses and the education reforms, the Arabic alphabet had been completely abandoned and a new generation of Turks were growing up under the bright lights of freedom and knowledge. It was the announcement of a new era a new race of people who had been awakened from centuries-old ignorance. The people who have founded the Republic of Turkey are called the Turkish nation, said Mustafa Kemal, referring to his people, who for centuries had been forced to suppress their identity under the religious rule of the Ottoman Empire. By secularizing the state, Kemal knew that he needed a new, much more effective tool to maintain the unity of the Republic. Nationalism. He immersed himself in studies of history and language to find elements of Turkish heritage, which would make the people proud of their history. 
He founded and was personally involved in the Turkish Historical and Linguistic Societies. Thanks to his efforts, Turks were learning about themselves and their ancestors. They were becoming more self-aware, self-confident. Mustafa Kemal said it best, Turk, be proud, be diligent, be confident. We were brought up in such, in a, such full confidence that uh, it, it is still impossible to take away from us that national identity which was given to us by that great man because he was our national identity to begin with. When a law was passed stating that every Turk had to adopt a surname, Mustafa Kemal was given the surname of Ataturk, Father Turk. While the work at hand was extremely serious, uh, Kemal also had a fun side to him. He had a great sense of humor. Uh, he always tried to make uh, the workload light for people by engaging them in uh, repartee. During Ataturk's lifetime, there was never a dull moment in Turkey. Ataturk could appear at any house, at any party, at any restaurant, uh, or any movie showing at any time without prior arrangements, without prior notice. It was this capacity to engage in both play and work uh, that enabled him to keep such long hours and enabled him to focus on what he was all about. Turkey's prospects were on the rise by the early 1930s. Atatürk was finally prepared to display his creation to the rest of the world, which had been curiously eyeing this new republic. He began to receive a wave of visitors ranging from the British Prince of Wales to the King of Jordan and to General Douglas MacArthur, the chief of the American military. Aware of the rising threats of Nazi Italy and Germany, Ataturk predicted the Second World War during his meetings with MacArthur in 1932. He then took precautions for the impending danger by announcing his foreign policy to all his neighbors. Turkey does not desire an inch of foreign territory, but it will not give up an inch of its own. He knew that to ensure peace, old enemies had to become friends. Through his initiation and that of the Greek Prime Minister, Venizelos, a Balkan pact was signed between Turkey, Greece, Romania, and Yugoslavia. Securing the country's western borders, Ataturk turned to the east, signing the Sardabad Pact with Iran, Iraq, and Afghanistan. With his nomination for the Nobel Peace Prize by Venizelos, Ataturk's reputation as a peace-seeking ruler grew outside of the country. Despite his fame and the masses of people around him, Ataturk was lonely. Loving children and trying to create a regular family for himself, he had adopted eight daughters. He wanted these young women to become models uh, for the emerging Turkish youth. So he was involved in every aspect of their lives, their schooling, their choice of clothing, uh, the kinds of sports they played, the kinds of careers they would have. Uh, these. Uh, the lives of these young girls 